the whole concept of the death of God in reference to our own culture, which in the West is based on Judeo-Christian morality and values, even as our more scientific or empirical nature moves further from that, it's interesting that as we move further away from religion, we still have its base tenets as the models of our society. We still sort of play by those rules, which is a sort of interesting contradiction and something that is argued a lot in philosophies. But I wanted to share the death of God with you because I find it pretty interesting. So I'm going to not read the whole thing, but try to kind of uh, explain it as I go. It is a a quote and it's a passage in here and then we'll kind of discuss it. It's basically a madman running through the streets saying, I seek God, I seek God. And a bunch of disbelievers kind of laughing at this and saying, what's with this guy? Um, What's he even talking about or worried about? And the madman goes on a bit of a rant. Where is God? I shall tell you, we have killed him, you and I. All of us are his murderers. And then he asks, but how are we able to do it? How could we drink the sea? who gave us the ability to wipe away the horizon? How did we unchain the earth from its sun? Where are we going now? Where are we moving unchained? Is there any up or down or left or backwards or forwards anymore without God, basically? Has it not become colder? Is it not night and more night coming on all the while? Must not lanterns be lit in the morning? Gods too decompose. God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. Now, this is the part that I find, which is kind of the end of it and the most interesting part. It says, how shall we, the murderers of all murderers, comfort ourselves? What was holiest and most powerful of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives. Who will wipe this blood off of us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must not we ourselves become gods simply to seem worthy of it. And kind of in the margins here, I wrote a little personal thought, which was in the modern day, have we created new gods? I think that's an interesting um, concept is what God shall we have to invent? Have we invented gods? Uh, Do we worship at new altars? Because as Peter Simmel later argue, we cannot live without a God. It's just like inhuman to be godless. It might change, the definition may change, Um, And maybe that's not for the better. So if we as individuals and as societies need some sort of God or gods, what will we make them if we've killed the old? What What will we make the new out of and will it be better or worse? Because this book was published 20 years ago, I kind of wonder as our culture is seemingly shifting almost at a breakneck speed, or at least it feels that way sometimes, I wonder if we can still argue that we are living entirely under under Judeo-Christian values or if that has shifted in 20 years or has it shifted significantly enough that we have to change that philosophical argument. It's something to ponder. I mean, things are certainly different than they were in 1999. And I suppose it's up to the individual and up to society to decide if, if that is better. But still, of course, at its base principle, we live by certain rules that are biblical in nature, like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet. And Peterson is saying that those rules, those base rules have guided us for many, many, many years. And is it not foolish of us to shun those rules now so, and so quickly when they have clearly brought success to our ancestors and our Um, past societies, at least to the point where they got us to now, where I'm able to sit here and talk to you through this thing um, about this book written 20 years ago. Is that not uh, something that we could call a success in at least one definition or several definitions? And his point is that those rules were shaped without empirical thought, because empirical thought did not really exist, or at least it wasn't Uh, in existence the way it is today. And if it did exist, it certainly wasn't centric to culture and values. So these old rules that we still live by today, though they are perhaps challenged and changing, he says 
those rules are so powerful, so necessary at least, that they maintain their existence, even in the presence of explicit theories that undermine their validity. This is a mystery. So he's basically saying that we're still living by those rules, but yet we shirk them quite constantly um, for our love of empiricism, which also has its value. But how is it that these ancient civilizations could have been built on these very old rules for society uh, and made it so far and so successfully if they did not have some implicit value in them? If myths are mere superstitious proto-theories, then why did they work and why were they remembered? He then compares religious-based societies which have lasted or survived essentially unchanged in some cases for tens of thousands of years with more modern, completely rationalist ideologies, which he says fascist or communist, which sound logical generally, at least at first, but they are they don't work as has been proven time and time again. And they can be proven not to work in a space of mere generations, despite the fact that they are intellectually or empirically compelling. And here's where Peterson really makes his point. Is it not more likely that we just do not know how it could be that traditional notions are right, given their appearance of extreme irrationality? Is it not likely that this indicates modern philosophical ignorance rather than ancestral philosophical error? We have made the great mistake of assuming that the world of spirit described by those who preceded us was the modern world of matter. Just because something is not empirically true doesn't necessarily mean that it is not real. Is it not fair of us to compare a pre-empirical worldview with a post-empirical worldview? And what does that say about our own cultures of belief within society? Hi, thanks for watching part of my ongoing series as I continue to read Jordan Peterson's textbook, Maps of Meaning. If you want more content like this, be sure to check out the full playlist linked below. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll leave a like and a comment below. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, then go ahead, press that subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.